Hello. This episode we're going to do some more gameplay stuff. We're going to uh, give guards guns. Because <laughs> um, right now they have the same kind of logic as our swarming enemies, which is they can only hurt you if they bump into you, and they're very, very slow. So they're really just scouts, you know, they, they only spot you, and that's really their only threat. Um, I think they should be more scary, because I think that could tie into some interesting stuff later on. I also think our basic enemies, rather than just like nudging you and that hurting you, they should actually blow up when they hit you. Um, so we'll do that. And then the rest of this stuff, uh, we'll see what we get to. Actually, while I mention it, I'm going to set a timer for myself for 45 minutes. <laughs> we don't have to stop at 45 minutes, but at that point I'll start to wrap it up at least if we're not done. Um, and actually I'll, I'll move some of this stuff up here because these bugs we should definitely fix. Um, but we'll get to those after guard stuff. So let's open our guard prefab. Um, these icons are kind of big, and our project's got bigger now, so I'm actually going to drag this little slider down here. That lets you change the size of these icons. If you drag it all the way down, it becomes a list like this, but actually just some small icons is pretty good for us, I think. Um, just so I can find guard. So the hope is that um, because we built our game in a quite modular way, like the gun is not, is not, when we came to make a gun, we didn't edit our player code to add shooting bullets, did we? We made a whole new weapon class, and we made guns their own objects, and when you pick up that object, it attaches yourself, attaches to yourself. Uh, so that should mean we can just make, we can just drag a, guard, a gun into the guard and then tell the guard how to use it, and it'll use it in much the same way the player does, and, and that'll all work out. And that's quite a nice way to build games, because it's um, both sort of more adaptable, you can change your, your design more easily, um, and also sometimes it gives you rise to ideas, you know, just the idea of giving a guard a gun, that probably occurred to me more readily because I knew I could do it really easily. Um, and yeah, that's that's cool. I'm um, actually, I forgot, we've got to do one more thing because these things, all our weapons, they are... Now, are our weapons prefabs? See if you can answer that question. They... Weapon itself is a prefab. There is a weapon prefab. And then all of these are edited instances of that prefab. And that's okay if there's only one scene. Uh, but actually, now that we have um, multiple scenes, uh, it doesn't really make sense to have these be things, the edits to this that this shotgun makes to the weapon prefab are only saved in this scene. The fact that our other scene also has it is only because we cloned that scene. If we ever change it, we're going to get into trouble. So I'm actually going to make all of our, uh, well, our three weapons that we actually use, we'll make them, um, we'll make them prefabs. Uh, should I open the, a different scene to do this? Because this is level one. Yeah, let's open level two, because that's got all the weapons. Uh, so I'm going to delete this rifle one. Uh, we don't need it. Um, it's been disabled forever. It's just um, a holdover from a, an earlier version. Uh, so I think we're going to give it up guards Uzis. We'll do that one first. The way you make... So these are... Uh, we've talked about variants before, haven't we? Because this our big death effect is a variant of our normal death effect. Uh, well, every weapon is going to be its own variant of the, of the weapon uh, class. So the way you do that is just drag it from there into the project folder, and it'll say, do you want to make this a completely new prefab or a variant? I want it to be a variant, because if we do change something about weapons in general, we want it to apply to all our weapons. But if we change something about the Uzi specifically, we want that change to be in both all the scenes that use an Uzi. If there's an Uzi around, the Uzi should change. Um, but if the shot, if it's a shotgun instead, then it shouldn't change. So that's what we want. Um, and then we just do this for the shotgun as well, prefab variant, and railgun, prefab variant. And now we're not done because uh, we need to go back to scene one, save this one. And you'll notice these are not these are not variants, right? They should have a little uh, a different icon if they're variants, but they're not. We didn't tell them. They're only associated with the weapon prefab. The fact that a different instance of the weapon prefab and a different scene changed does not mean these change. And that's the very problem we're trying to solve um, because uh, that's a that's bad. We want them to change. So let's. Uh, I guess I'll just drag a shotgun in. And did it go to the exact right spot? Oh, that's rather neat. <laughs> just its default position was, was where we last had it, so it just went to where we want it. So I just delete the old shotgun. And then same for Uzi, I guess. Drag it into the scene. Um, let me press F to check it appeared in the right place. And actually it did. If I select the other Uzi, then my selection doesn't change at all because it's in the exact same place. Delete. Cool. Um, now we open our guard prefab. And now I'm just going to drag the Uzi in from our project folder and hit F. 
Now our lighting is a bit messed up here, isn't it? We um, we asked Unity to show us prefabs in the scene, the our normal scene. Um, uh, I'm just going to turn lighting off. This little like toggle there uh, lets us at least see the scene a bit better. It seems to be a bug. I've, I found a thread about it in, uh, with Unity developers promising they're going to fix it two years ago. <laughs> and, um, there are, and there's probably other ways you can set up your your prefab scene, but we are they sort to work for us because we are literally using the very scene that we use in the game, right? It should look exactly the same. Um, but yeah, if we just turn lighting off, it's it's livable. Um, so this Uzi variant has appeared at a weird spot. So I'm just going to click this cog and say reset on its transform, and then it will go to zero zero zero. That turns out to be in the floor, <laughs> um, and uh, we probably want it to be. Uh, yeah, one seems reasonable, doesn't it? Oh, this is quite nice. If you look in the background, there's another guard there. And as we make changes here, it makes changes to them too. <laughs> um, so this looks super dorky, but uh, it's going to be uh, interesting gameplay-wise. Or it's going to make the game more fun. So guard behavior, if we want them to fire a gun, we, they need a reference to the gun, right? So we'll edit guard behavior. Just double click it. The UZ we have is quite powerful. <laughs> I, so I've, I've tested this and uh, the guards become fairly formidable because our, our UZ fires a lot of bullets. We're certainly not gonna give the guards rail guns. That would be craziness. Um, so the guard behavior, let's give it a public weapon behavior. Uh, and just call it my weapon. And we'll set that reference up in the inspector in a minute. And then when do we want them to use it? Well, it's when they're alerted uh, to chase player. They should also uh, do my weapon dot fire. And then in brackets, we have to supply, in fact, as I open the brackets, it's popping up and saying, we need a target position for that. So we want it to be references dot the player dot transform dot position. We want them to shoot at the player. But of course, as we write that, a little alarm bell should go off in our head of like, what if the player doesn't exist right now? What if the player has been destroyed? So we should um, check. You know, just because we're alerted, that doesn't mean the player exists. The player existed once. <laughs> they must have existed at some point for us to get alerted, but they might be dead now. So we better check if references dot the player. Oops, excuse me. Dot the player uh, not equal to null. Then we will do this. Uh, yeah, so that says, if we're alerted, then fire a weapon at the player. This doesn't care about a whole load of things that it probably should care about, <laughs> but let's just make sure it works. Uh, and that should give us a little slot in here for weapon. My weapon. Let's drag the Uzi variant into my weapon. So now every guard has, an, has a copy of the Uzi variant, and every guard knows about it. And if we just play the game, we may find that they shoot at us. Yep, there he goes. <laughs> so, a couple of interesting things about this. One is, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I'm getting knocked back slightly, that's not me moving. Um, but I'm not losing any health at all. And I believe that is because... Oh, we can... Let's bait him into shooting these guys. <laughs> and then another problem is they keep firing even when we're the other side. Um, oh, and uh, yet another problem is... Wow, he blew himself up. <laughs> Um, so maybe the first thing to fix is the bullets don't hurt us. Uh, I think they should. We did that. I think we were worried about bullet, the bullets we fire colliding with us. Um, but so I'm, I'm editing. Oh, sorry, I just go through what I just did there. I double clicked on the bullet prefab and then I double clicked on the bullet behavior because we want to change how it behaves. And we have a check in here in on collision enter. We whatever their game object is, we check does it have an enemy behavior component and only if it has an enemy behavior com component do we reduce its health. So let's just delete that check. Let's just say all we care about is do they have, um, uh, I'm going to hit K, control KD here just to realign everything. Um, all we care about is do they have a health system. If it has health, it can be damaged, and, and that's what we want. Um, let's check this. Hey you. Yep. <laughs> Annihilated me immediately. So that's our, our Uzi 
uh, I didn't notice this until I was fighting against it, but Aruzi is very ineffective at long range and very effective at close range. Uh, absolutely shreds you at close range. <laughs> so we might want some kind of delay on that um, or make Uzi less powerful. Uh, so that's good, but right now they also fire even when they can't see you, um, which is, I don't mind them always knowing where you are, because uh, it gets a bit more complicated if we want a true awareness system where each individual guard has their own internal awareness of, of whether they've seen you or not. It's not that complicated, but, but we want to keep things as simple as possible for now. Um, once the alarm has gone off, this is no longer a stealth game. The idea is it's a stealth game until you set off the alarm. Once the alarm goes off, it's an action game. So awareness becomes less of a, a, a crucial mechanic at that point. Um, but we should at least check that they're not, they're not just going to shoot into a wall pointlessly. Um, so uh, the code that reminds me most of is our uh, control T, uh, our railgun beam. Do you remember when we when we a railgun beam fires? It has to the first thing it does is it checks how far can we go before we hit a wall, and we want something like that, don't we? So I'm going to copy that one line of code, uh, the physics dot raycast bit, and we're going to take it over to guard. Um, I'll just write, I'm not going to put it all in here because it's going to get, it's going to be quite a long line of code. So I'm going to make my own function called, uh, I'll call it protected um, uh, bool uh, can see player. And I'm just going to paste that line of code. It won't, it won't like it right now. Um, or will it? Maybe it's fine. Uh, yeah, it's actually fine in itself. But Right now, let me break this into different lines so we can talk about it bit by bit because it's a rather daunting uh, function call. We went over it obviously at the time, but uh, I don't even remember <laughs> really what all the parts do. Um, so this is the starting point, transform position. We actually still want that. This is the direction. Um, if I mouse over the word raycast, you'll see the list there. So that's where I'm getting this information. Um, direction, it used to, this a beam just fires forwards, but our guard, we want them to, to um, uh, we don't care, sorry, this is for seeing player, we're not just looking in a straight line ahead, we want to check whether we could see the player if we were facing in any direction. So the direct, what direction do we want? Um, let's define a new vector three, uh, vector to player. This is, this is the line of code we've written a few times before, in fact, it's right here, right? just below us, There's, we already have a vector to player, so let's just copy and paste that. Um, oh, excuse me, it does also need the player position. Should we copy that as well? Let's just copy both these lines of code. Um, and uh, vector to player is gonna be our direction. So what direction should we Fire in, well, oh, sorry, this is not firing, this is, <laughs> this is seeing. What direction do we want to check collision in? Uh, the, the question of can we see the player depends on the line that, that goes towards the player. Does that hit a wall before it hits the player? And so this is the other thing we want to change is uh, previously for a beam, we wanted to check as far as the beam will go, like the max distance in the level, just as far as it makes sense to even look, um, to look for any walls we might hit. Now, that's not how far we want to go. Um, we don't want this we're going to ask, does this ray hit anything? And we don't care if the ray hits something after it goes past the player, do we? If the player's one meter away from us, they're right in front of us, and there's a wall 10 meters behind them, we don't want this check to say, nope, can't see the player because it hit a wall 10 meters behind the guy. Um, we want it to only go as far as the player. So the max distance is not max distance in a level anymore. It's going to be the distance to the player, which we have because we just made a vector to the player. So that's vector to player dot magnitude. How big is the vector to the player? How far away are they? Uh, we still do want to check against walls layer. Uh, that's, we want to check if there's any walls in the way. Um, and so all of this, previously we were using this, this out raycast hit info uh, to give us some information about the hit. Um, can I just delete that? Will that work? Yes, cool. We don't need that anymore. We don't care. We don't want to know anything about the wall we hit. <laughs> we just want to know, uh, did we hit any walls between us and the player? Um, and so... Uh, we, so yeah, uh, in case it's not clear, the raycast thing, that out hit info thing, 
that was I described that as like a dossier of information that they they give back to us. It's complicated. There's lots of parts to it. There's different files within that that, that all these different bits of data. But actually, physics.raycast by itself, you'll see here it says boo. And if you the very function we're writing right now is a boo. Boo means boolean. It means true or false. It is a check. So it's going to return true or false, uh, even if we don't. It doesn't give us that dossier of extra information. So we can just say if physics raycast all of that. Um, and that looks a bit weird syntax-wise, but hopefully you understand that's all. This is all one line of code, really. It's, we just split it onto multiple lines, so I could explain it better. And we could put it back on one line if you like, but I don't like doing that because it goes off the edge of the screen. <laughs> um, so, and with Raycast, it's a real common mistake is uh, forgetting which way round you mean it. <laughs> so, what is uh, when this returns true? It means that the ray did hit a wall before it hit the player. So let's actually say that. means we can't see the player. So we would return false. Um, and then the else we return true. And this is all good. This will work. Um, I hope. <laughs> he says confidently. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll over explain this to the ray hit no walls before it reached the player. Um, so this, this works because it will always return true or false. But actually, there's one more thing we could do here. So for one thing, here we assume the player exists. Uh, we don't want to assume the player exists. Let's uh, ask if the player exists. And we'll say if references dot the player. Uh, now, instead of saying not equal to null, I'm actually going to say equal to null. Because what I'm going to do is if the player doesn't exist, we actually want to uh, return false right now. So right at the top. Uh, if the player doesn't exist, don't need to do any other calculation. We already have our answer. We can't see the player because they don't exist. Uh, and that, this might, I don't think we've done this before. This, I think this is called an early out, um, which means basically the function can end before the rest of the function runs um, if this certain condition is true. And so it looks a bit funny because we're not doing else, right? If you wanted to be super sort of, I don't know, stick to one convention throughout, you could do an else here and then everything else is in the else statement. But we don't need to do that as long as this will either, if this is true, we hit the return false and we, we bounce out of this function, we're done. If it's not true, we carry on. Um, and then we'll hit this other more complicated decision. And it's quite good to do this, especially with things like raycasts. Raycasts are somewhat expensive that you don't want to be doing thousands of them per frame. <laughs> um, uh, so if there's a way that you can bail out of a function early uh, because the whole thing is not even relevant, then it's quite nice to do that. And this actually means that back here, we have a null check already, right? For can, uh, does the player exist? We don't need that anymore because uh, if we can see the player, we know they exist. So now we just say if can see player. Um, that seems pretty logical to me. Shall we see if it works? And I, I split that off into a function because it seems like something we might want to use later as well. It might have other uses for a can you see the player function. I guess I should rephrase it, actually. I should, I should call it line of sight to player. Oh, let's just fire. OK, great. So we set off the alarm, but this guy is not firing because he can't see us. Uh, so if we go over here, he still doesn't shoot us. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, you know what's happening there? He isn't alerted. So that actually contradicts what I said earlier, which is I said that when, once the alarm goes off, it's an action game, and we don't care about awareness anymore. Um, and I think we want that. We don't. It, it's kind of ridiculous. This guy's still patrolling the halls, wondering if anyone's around when the alarm has gone off and all these people are flooding in. I want the alarm state to be a full-on like ah, everything's going crazy. Um, so, in the guards update right at the top, I'm just going to say if um, references dot level manager dot alarm sounded, then alerted equals true. Don't care if we ourselves haven't seen it. If the alarm's gone off, we're alerted for sure. And that's, um, yeah, alerted doesn't have to mean that we, we are currently seeing the player. Um, in our case, we're going to make sure we always know that, where the player is. But um, that will work, I think. So yeah, it looked a bit ridiculous, him like, walking towards us when, apart from anything, it's kind of, I think we're going to have lights going off and stuff. So it doesn't make sense that they can't. Oh, hang on. OK, so he, Right now, he's not alerted. We're in the, the stealth phase of the game. 
if I now fire over here, he's alerted now. And as soon as I'm in line of fire, he sure shoots at me. And hey, the bullet's hurt now, which is good. Uh, oh yeah, we already established that, didn't we? Um, so the problem you probably noticed there is that he doesn't look at me when he shoots me, which is just rude. <laughs> um, if we can see the player, we should also face the player. And I think we can do that just with transform.look at references the player dot transform dot position we could I'm kind of tempted to have a a shorter way of saying the player's position because we, we've said it as a variable several times haven't we um, should we do that yeah let's do that real quick so this is just um, if we just make a protected Vector three called player position. It's just going to return references dot the player dot transform dot position. Just uh, sorry, no, there's no brackets on that. That's just a variable. Uh, so that will just be a slightly neater way of saying it. And we'll go in and replace. Uh, now we don't need that as a variable here. We can just say this, and we don't need it. A long thing there we don't need a long thing there that makes our code it's not that it makes it shorter although it does um, it's that it makes it more readable I can look at that and just see immediately what it's saying fire at the player position look at the player position can see player chase player I like it when code reads like that like that uh, further down here we used that that variable before so we'll just change that to be what it should be um, yeah I think that's it uh, there's actually while we're at it I, I noticed a thing do you remember I was talking about when they're on their patrol, they sometimes list to the right, uh, to the left. Um, they will sometimes seem to be looking not quite in the direction they're walking. That's because we still got a code here saying rotate. We, we used to have them spin on the spot, right? And now they're going on proper patrol routes. Uh, we don't want them to, to rotate anymore. We're just going to get rid of that. I don't even think we want this either, do we? Let me, I'm just going to comment this out for now just to see if it breaks anything. But I think our, our nav agent does all of our um, movement now. We don't need to be just be walking in the direction we're facing. Because um, either it's heading to a nav point or it's heading to the player. And in both cases, the nav agent should be handling it. Yeah, they still move. And I didn't notice the problem just now, but, but it sure doesn't have any problem now. <laughs> So we didn't make it worse. Um, and then, OK, yeah, it really looks at you now. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? Changes the feel of it completely. It seems angry now. It's like, yo, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, so they do have eyes in the back of the head. Like I say, this is an action game sequence at this point. So um, at range, it's super easy to avoid and survive. Um, but if I go close, I will get shredded. <laughs> Cool. So that's basically guard guns done. I might actually um, let's do reaction time. So let me first show you the problem because I have I've experienced this when testing. But it's sometimes super super harsh. Um, so let's say I snuck up on this guy and I've got a cool idea. I'm going to shoot him with a shotgun and take him out in one hit. And I missed slightly. I immediately shredded. <laughs> like, okay, that should be high stakes, I guess. But it's um, there are some other cases where it, it really doesn't feel good. Can I not? Oh, yeah. uh, why did we crash just then when I said the new game? Oh, this is something to do with um, if I unpause, it work. Uh, does it work fine? No. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, that, um, that's a few different weird things going on. Uh, I'll explain that bug because it's a confusing one when you get it. We told Unity to error pause, which means it pauses every time there's an error. Um, felt like the whole game had crashed. It hadn't really. This serialized ob target, sorry, serialized object target has been destroyed error. Uh, I don't know, I don't 100% understand what it is, but I only ever see it when I have a prefab open in the editor while I'm playing the game and then like the scene changes or something like that. Um, I think it's trying to save the open prefab, but it gets confused about what's going on. Um, so let me actually just test that I fix that by exiting the prefab mode there. Um, so yes, that didn't crash this time. Cool. 
Um, yeah, that's the thing worth knowing in general. Uh, what will we go and test next? Oh yeah, reaction time. Uh, I wanted to show you another bad case. Because, <laughs> um, okay, we are going to let these guys uh, see in the back of the head, but the second you put around the corner, even if they're facing away from you at the time, like, let's see if we can get this guy. <laughs> it's difficult to chase him. But yeah, if I come around the corner now, it's just immediate tracking. Um, I feel like they should have a bit of reaction time. So let's do that. Um, public float reaction time. And then we can do, this one doesn't have to be public, this can be a seconds, oh sorry, uh, yeah that is a point, uh, seconds seeing player. Uh, and that one is going to be zero when the game starts. Um, so now if we can see the player, we're actually going to say second seeing player increase by time dot delta time. So increase the amount of time we've seen them for. And then only if the second seeing player is greater than or equal to our reaction time um, do we actually do this. So reaction time, when reaction time is low, we're very fast to react. Um, and this will tick over quickly. Uh, and that is all fine. The only thing is we need to, um, when we're not seeing the player, I'll do a comment to clarify this. Then we set second seeing player back to zero. So as soon as we lose sight of them, our reaction time goes back to, to whatever. It's probably going to be quite short, like 0.2 seconds or something, maybe. We'll see how it feels. So I've got to remember to edit the prefab, not the instance, because I want this change to apply to everybody. Reaction time, let's try 0.5 at first and see if that feels really sluggish. And see if it works at all because I didn't test this. <laughs> That's slow. It's not crazy slow. So now that they're not seeing me, yeah, I get that grace period again. Do you know, we might want to... Um, there's one small change I want to make here, which is that... I think I like that slow reaction. I think that they're kind of scary. Um, it should be quite tough to deal with them. The change I want to make is there was a moment there where he wasn't fully facing me when I came around the corner and his reaction time was ticking down, but he wasn't looking at me while that happened. And that doesn't read right to me. I think uh, they should look at us. Um, Transform.lookat, at. this is the part where they look at us that should not depend on reactions. So basically, as soon as you round the corner, they're like, huh, and then they don't fire yet. And so all the time that you're waiting for them to fire, they're looking right at you. Uh, I'm going to save this. And I've just noticed Railgun Beam has an unsaved change. I don't like the sound of that because I didn't mean to change anything there. So I'm just going to close it and say, don't save. I don't think we did anything significant. I might have just changed a comment or something. Um, so yeah, they're going to look at us. Um, maybe I'll make a comment about that. And that's to warn the player, is to make sure you know you're being seen right now. You, you haven't got the jump on them. How are we going for time? 15 minutes left. Okay, so... Uh, where do you want them to be alerted, don't we? Oh god, I'm going to die to these guys. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it looks at me right away, then takes but takes a minute before they fire. Yeah, I like that. That feels a lot more human, <laughs> even though they're not even meant to be human. Feels fairer, I think, is, is the key thing. So, cool. That's guards done. Um, now, for our other enemy type, right now it's just called enemy. Uh, I think we might change that. Um, but one thing I want to change is um, what they do when they meet you. So let's, yeah, so this is gonna be a behavior that is unique to this type of enemy. 
we've got this this general enemy behavior class that sort of seeks you, and that's it. Um, the fact that they hurt you is just a um, uh, well, it's, it's handled here. Um, the thing we're about to do now is that when they touch you, they blow up. Now, I don't think that should be true for guards. Uh, guards, I see guards as like, they kind of are the humanoid opponent. They're sort of, they're thinking, they have vision, they react to things, they um, sort of making a decision. They see you and they sound the alarm. Um, they hold guns. Uh, whereas these little crawly things, those are just drones. They're just like little bots that are going to swarm towards you. And when they blow up on contact, but it makes a lot of sense for them to blow up on contact. It doesn't make a lot of sense for the humanoid guards to blow up on contact. All of which is to say, we want to add a behavior that's unique to this swarming enemy type. Um, and so we can't put it in enemy behavior because enemy behavior is the parent class for guard behavior. Uh, guard behavior right at the top. You will remember it inherits from enemy behavior, which means it's a, it's a special case of an enemy. Uh, what we're about to make is also a special case of an enemy. It's not a general thing. So we actually want to create a whole new file. So on the enemy prefab, I'm going to go to add component and I'm going to say on a new script and I'll call them. Uh, I feel like we call them swarmers already. Maybe I will call them swarmers here as well. Swarmer behavior. I don't know where their name comes up, but I feel like we've used that word. And I edit it, and the first thing I do is instead of inheriting from mono behavior, which is the general class that, that all the scripts are writing do, uh, we'll make it a subclass of enemy behavior. And now immediately we get some green lines because we're defining start and update here. Well, enemy behavior already has a start and update. And we're not saying we want to override it. We're also not saying we want to inherit it. We are uh, just creating some ambiguity there, which is bad. Uh, let's do things the way that guard behavior does. In fact, I think if we just delete these, then that means that we will use our parents' versions of them. So start and update and everything will be all whatever enemy behavior says it is. If we just save the class like this, we have the exact same situation we had already. Um, but we do want to change one thing, don't we? We want to change what happens when the um, when you touch them. And in fact, I'm, going to, I'm just going to cut that and then paste it into the, the swarmer behavior because we don't want guards to hurt you on touch either. Again, they're kind of humanoid enemies. It doesn't make sense that they hurt you when they touch you. Their gun is the problem. <laughs> That's why you've got to watch out for them. Um, so this is uh, what happens on contact. Um, and it checks to see if it's the player we collided with. And if so, um, we uh, currently just deal them some damage. But actually, instead, we're going to, um, instead of this, explode. Uh, how are we going to explode? I think uh, we already have an explosion prefab, don't we? So let's do, let's make a public game object explosion prefab. So we have a reference to it. And then here, we will say instantiate explosion prefab uh, at our transform.position and at our transform.rotation. Is that correct? And then we won't damage the player at all. We're not going to do anything. We're just checking, did we hit the player? In fact, in fact, in fact, we don't need any of this uh, health system stuff, do we? We're not going to interact with the health system. We just want to know, are they the player? And they are the player. So. Um, Yeah. We actually, should we change this? This says, look at their game object, see if it has a player behavior component, and if it does, do this. Let's write this in a more logical way, because now that we have a reference to the player, we can just say, if their game object equals references dot the player, although, let me just double check, is the player a game object? Yes, it is. Um, so if they are the player, then uh, explode. Well, uh, we should, that creates the explosion and then, then we also want to destroy our game object. Game object is the thing all these scripts are attached to. Uh, create an explosion, destroy ourselves. Let's even create an explosion. Let's clarify, this is what will hurt the player. Because remember our explosion already does hurt the player. And then destroy ourselves. 
So when we go back to our enemy prefab, we're going to find that uh, we have the swarm behavior. I'm going to drag it up further up the, the thing um, because I want it right next to our enemy behavior. We've got two things that, that kind of contradict each other, right? Um, the, we wouldn't want both of these. The reason I left the enemy behavior on here is I want to copy its values, and the only value here is speed is two. Um, and now that we've copied that, I can just remove it, that component. Uh, now we've got the explosion prefab slot we asked for. Let's just drag explosion in there. And maybe that's all we need. Let's see what, what happens. Um, sorry, I'm just going to stop because uh, I just saw a warning there. It didn't expect. Let me see if that comes up again. No, we're good. I think at one point we had the same code in both files, perhaps. Um, I'm just going to pause and check because maybe I didn't save one of them. Yeah, I didn't save one of them. Okay, sorry. Let's stop this. Uh, I forgot that it doesn't auto save, so I do need to manually save enemy behavior because we removed that on collision enter thing and then we put it on swarm behavior, but we didn't save that change in the enemy, enemy behavior file. So that warning was a real one. Uh, so I want some swarmers, so actually I'm going to try and kill this guy in one hit. Nope. <laughs> Alright, here's some swarmers. What happens when they hit me? They blow up! <laughs> and in fact they blow up... Uh, oh, this happened again because we had a, a prefab open when it tried to change level, so uh, we'll have to stop doing that. Let's, uh, let's modify this level a little bit. I want to give it... Uh, let's have it produce 10 enemies, but instead of being so fast, it'll do one second between each spawn. Maybe even two seconds between each spawn. And then the other thing I want to change is this explosion. Um, it kills us instantly. I don't think these guys should kill us instantly. If one of them brushes us, it shouldn't be the end of the game. Um, so I want to change the damage it, the explosion does, but there isn't actually a field for damage here. So I'm going to double click it and I'm going to make one. Um, let's just define a public int. Uh, let me just check, sorry, in a health system, is our health an integer or is it just a float? It's a float. Okay, so let's make this a float too. Public float, damage, uh, and then somewhere down here there'll be either number 10. Yeah, their health system will take damage 10. Well, don't make it always 10. Let's make it damage, whatever damage is. And uh, we could change it I think I'll just change it on this explosion prefab because right now this is the only place we use it. If we ever want an explosion that does a different amount of damage, we just change that on the whatever instance or um, use of it we have. So now I'm expecting I should be able to take this guy out. <laughs> that just about worked. And then these guys spawn. Let me let one, one of them hit me. Oh yeah, I lose some health, but I don't die. Um, I think that's okay for our for the explosion thing. Um, oh, I wanted to check one more thing, which is uh, just that when I kill them, I don't want them to blow up. Because the, the old thing we had with like a chain reaction, um, yeah. So when I kill them, it's just a small explosion. When they hit me, it's a bigger explosion, and it hurts. Cool. Um, that's both of our enemy things done. Um, yes, we do have a bug that I want to fix, which is uh, when you go to new game. It starts paused and you have to hit escape to unpause it. Uh, that's a simple thing. It's because when this is all in a canvas behavior, when we uh, bring up the menu, we pause time uh, and we only resume time when we run hide menu but when you start a new game we don't run hide menu we just um, uh, load the scene so in fact let's just run hide menu and check that that works took a while to tab back uh, New game. Great, that's, that's fixed. 
it, it's actually it's taking me two hits of escape to get to the menu, uh, and I think that might be because hmm, no, it's not. Why is that? Why would our first hit of escape not work? Uh, when the menu button is hit, if the current menu is main menu, we hide menu. If it's not, we show main menu. I let me start the game. Aha! It's current menu, main menu. That is happening on startup. Did we tell it to happen on startup? Yes, we did. <laughs> we have a thing saying current menu equals main menu. I think at one point we started in the menu, right? And then I decided to have start straight into the game. Um, so if I take that out, that should fix it. Yeah, just one hit. And the new game works perfectly. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, when you die, I think we should show this new game menu. Um, uh, so, I think this should be so, this. Excuse me. <clears throat> this, I think, this should be something that level manager does. Uh, so let's open that. And we will have a variable for how long it should wait. Um, public float uh, time or oh, seconds before showing death menu. <laughs> let's call it the death menu to make it sound cooler. Um, and we could say if references dot the player equals null, then seconds before showing death menu should tick down time dot delta time. Uh, redu sorry, reduce it by time dot delta time. And then if it's hit zero, i.e. it's less than or equal to zero, then we should do references dot now we might uh, a canvas. What I wanted to do here is show menu, but it's not coming up, is it? And that is because let's comment this out for a minute. If we go to references, our uh, reference to the canvas is actually a reference to the game object, not to the canvas behavior. Uh, I don't really remember why we did that, but I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> I think we should we want a reference to the well. Actually, no. Let me show you how uh, I came to that conclusion. Um, so I don't remember why this is a game object, and this is a common thing. You, you write code a certain way, you don't remember why you made that decision. Uh, there's a chance you had a good reason. Uh, there's also a chance your good reason at the time is no longer applicable. So if I right-click on it and I say find all references, we get a search window here. What I want to know is everything that refers to the canvas, do they need it to be the game object? So one of them, the first one is just canvas setting the, the reference in the first place. Um, then the only other one is health system. Uh, health system wants to know the canvas's transform because when it creates a health bar it's got to put it on the canvas and that's what you need for that you need is transform well that actually doesn't it doesn't matter that this is the game object that could also be canvas behavior if you go to if you say um, you know uh, get if this was canvas behavior and you said canvas behavior dot transform you get the transform of the game object um, that's a universal thing you can do in, in unity so in other words, it doesn't matter where well, there's no good reason for it to be a reference to the game object. It should be a reference to the canvas behavior because, um, and then in canvas behavior start, instead of saying set this to our game object, we want to set it to us, we want to set it to this, this very script. Uh, and that enables us to have level manager, which I've lost already. Let's drag it over. Um, now we can do references.canvas show menu, but it actually gets awkward again because now we want to say main menu. So what I want to type is main menu here. It doesn't know what main menu is. Uh, Canvas behavior has its own definition of main menu, but we don't have access to that unless we do references.canvas.main menu. And okay, you can write that, but that's, there's two things wrong with this. One, it's very unwieldy. <laughs> um, and the other thing is I kind of, I'm making assumptions about how the canvas behavior works. This is level manager. If I write this line of code, level manager depends on canvas behavior working the way that it currently does. If we ever change canvas behavior, we've got to go back and change level manager as well. So if we can avoid that, we should. And what I think we should do is have a public void um, function for show 
main menu. And this is going to take no arguments. No one needs to know how we're going to do this. We need to know how we're going to do this. <laughs> and the way we're going to do it is um, show menu, main menu. I think that's all it needs. Yeah, because that's what we do when we hit escape. So, uh, oh yeah, we might, uh, let, me, let me just see what show menu says. Um, yeah, okay. I'm trying to foresee a problem, but let's let's just hit the problem head first. <laughs> um, the problem is, so let's, we can now make this much nicer. Yep, that's my timer. Um, show my menu, and that should work. Uh, let's test it. But what I think we're going to find is that it repeatedly tries to do this. So first we've got to configure it. It's in level manager. Um, so we'll finish this job and then we'll also, there's one more thing I want to get done before we, before we wrap up. Uh, seconds before show whatever. Let's make that just one second for now. And let's get ourselves killed. Doesn't do it at all, does it? <laughs> Why is that? Um, I saw it. It was ticking down correctly. Seconds. Oh, I've, I've used the wrong variable here. Seconds before showing death menu, not seconds before next level. Um, it must have auto completed. I didn't notice it was auto completing to the wrong thing. That looks good. Um, yes, here's what I notice. All these buttons are black, and when I mouse over them, nothing changes. I think, and I also can't click them. <laughs> so there, really, there are multiple issues here. Um, so it's because this this is true continuously. Uh, once it's true once, it's going to continue being true, because the player doesn't come back alive, and there's no other check here. Um, so really, uh, we could have show my menu check um, if, uh, you know what, this isn't quite right. So what I was going to do is say, if only do this if we're not already looking at the main menu, which is a logical thing to say, and it's not wouldn't be wrong to put it there, but it doesn't quite fix our problem, does it? Um, I think we really only want to do this once. Um, and so like one thing we could do is we, we could reset this back to whatever. Um, here, and then it would just recur a few seconds later. That's not really what we want. Uh, what I'm worried about is if the player goes to the credits menu from here, um, we don't want to pull them back. We don't want to say, no, 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 you can't do that. You've got to go to the main menu. Um, really, our intent is just to show this menu once. One time, we're going to trigger this menu. If you want to get out of it, you can get out of it. Um, and so I think we will just define a rule shown death menu. Um, and on startup, it will be, sorry, start, not awake. It will be false. And here, we only care if shown death menu equals false. And once we've asked it to be shown, we then say show death menu equals true. Uh, so now that whole thing will only happen once. Did I save? Yes. Right, it works. And I can go into credits. Yeah. Uh, and I can go back. And I can go to a new game. I can even, at that point, I can resume, which is maybe a bit weird. <laughs> he just killed himself. <laughs> you idiot. I was trying to test my own death. Um, yeah, I can resume. I can't do anything if I resume. We could possibly disable that at, at some future date, but uh, it's not too important right now uh, since we're going over time. Uh, yeah, the one more thing I wanted to do is now that we've made a bunch of changes to things like the that level manager change I made seconds before showing thing, that's that's an override right now. Um, it probably shouldn't be. Um, but also, hmm, hmm, no, it shouldn't be. Uh, let's apply that. We want that to be the case on every level. Um, 
what I was going to do is... Okay, yeah, the, the thing I was going to do is actually not necessary yet, because uh, one of the other things we're going to add is like an alarm sound, and we'll get to a point where we have a bunch of things that we want to be in every level. And at that point, we'll make a sort of parent object for those and make them essential. Uh, but we're not going to do that yet, because actually we don't have enough things that, that need that behavior. The one thing we really should do, though, is Canvas should be a prefab, because this is in both levels, um, and we want it to be the same in both levels. So I'm just going to drag it to the project folder. Um, and when I open, this is level one, right? If I open level two and I save changes to the current level, uh, it's not going to be the prefab there, because we haven't told it to be. So uh, let me, where have I gone? Um, let me drag it back in, wherever it's gone. Here we go. Uh, and I'm going to delete the non. Let me just check. There's nothing custom about it. No. Delete the old canvas. Uh, rename the new one to get rid of that one. And let me just check that that works. Yeah. Menu should be the same in both cases. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we had a couple more things we didn't get to, um, but I don't want this to get super long. Uh, so next time we will uh, add some sort of effects to when the alarm's going off, so there'll, there'll be lights and sound to do with that. I tried that in a test, and it actually adds a lot to the game. It makes it feel a lot more uh, significant when that happens, and it gives it a kind of action panic kind of feel, uh, which is cool. Um, and I guess, and then this essential thing I was talking about, which uh, we will see if that actually ends up making sense to do. Um, but yeah, it's coming together. It's quite fun to work on it at this stage because um, A, that it kind of makes progress. I'm just going to save this scene. Um, make progress much faster. Like we haven't, for quite a while now, we haven't had any really tough episodes. We're learning sticky, difficult new things. It's all working within things we already know, right? Uh, a lot of these episodes you probably could have done yourself. Um, uh, and then also, like, the thing I like about this stage is it raises questions about the design of the game. You find yourself really having to think about like, what do we want to do next? Like, what is the best way to make this game work? And that's the, that's the thing I get really excited about is just designing how how a game should work to generate fun and um, and spotting little opportunities to make it more interesting. That's my favorite bit. <laughs>